Okay, today we're going to learn how to make a camera. We're going to make a couple of different cameras. We're going to make one camera in my dark room. Uh, we're going to build a camera in, inside a dark room. We're also going to build a camera inside a woodshed. And we're going to build a camera inside a box. So, uh, in my dark room, So it's a nice bright day outside, kind of overcast a little bit. It's not a, a bad day. Um, so this is the light room and sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. Here's my dark room. And so we're going to build a camera in this dark room. The dark room has these red lights for certain kinds of photographic materials that are not sensitive to red light. But I can unscrew that and make it even darker. Now it's a little hard to see on this tiled floor of the dark room. So I'm in a dark room now with a tiled floor and I've got trays over here for developing film. So we could put photographic paper on the floor and be able to see that. For now let's just put, we'll put some paper on the floor so we can see that. It's a little hard to see otherwise. I have put these sheets of plain writing paper down on the floor. It'll be a little bit easier to see. Now let's try making the hole even a little smaller. Now if we wish to make the hole a little smaller, you can just simply put some black tape over part of it. Make the opening just a bit smaller. That will make the image a little darker and it may make it sharper up to a certain point until there's diffraction. So the only light coming in here ideally should be from that little hole up in the ceiling. It's a long exposure so you have to hold the camera steady. I've got a pretty good tripod here that'll hold it pretty steady. And then you can see there's, there's a picture of the tree there. And let's take that exposure again. And I've also turned my lab into a camera. So here, here I have uh, in my lab, I've got this door and I made a hole in the door. 
So the hole lets in light from outside. And so if you look outside, there's a tree there. This is kind of the view outside. There's a tree here and the brick wall. And so if I close that door and then put a screen here, I made this screen out of an old picture frame. The screen is made out of an old picture frame and I just stretched a piece of plastic over the picture frame. So the plastic is just like the ground glass from my camera. You, know, you can kind of see, you can see my hand there, but as my hand goes further away, it disappears. So it's very much like the ground glass. It's just a sheet of plastic I stretched over the glass of the picture frame to make it a little bit uh, translucent. And we're gonna hold that glass here in front of the hole and we'll see projected on there an image of what's out there. So let me turn off the light in my lab. I turn off the lights. It's nice and dark in here now. And then I'll close the door. So that it is nice and dark in here. And then now of course we can see the light coming in through that little hole there. You can see here the image of the tree projected on the desk there. And if I put some white paper on there, it's a little bit easier to see. You can actually see the tree there outside the door. I'll put a couple of sheets of white paper down to just make it a little bit easier to see. And there you have it. You can see the picture of the tree there projected on the, on the desk. And there you can see the tree there projected on that piece of plastic on the picture frame. Now I've got some black tape here, some black masking tape, because there's quite a bit of light leaking through that crack in the door. So I can get a sharper, clearer picture if I cover it up. You know, either put a piece of black cardboard or something against the opening so that light doesn't leak in. extra here near where the lock set is. So now I'm going to mount this thing so it's standing upright so it holds itself up. I'm going to put this frame next to it hold it in place and then I'm going to attach it to the frame like this so it stays standing upright. So today we're going to turn this room into a giant camera. I've got here some black paper. You can use black paper, black curtains, black cloth, black cardboard, scissors, a knife, and some tape. I'm wearing three rolls of tape here. Good to have some black tape.
going to get this here. Now, you can kind of see an image of what's out there on the wall here. It's quite fuzzy, of course, because the hole's still way too big, but as we make that hole smaller, we'll be able to see a slightly sharper, clearer picture of what's out there. Starting with this opening, which is definitely too big. And then we can make the hole a little smaller. Just put some tape over it, cut it out a little. Make it just a bit smaller, and then the image will be a little sharper up to a certain point. We're still a long way from the diffraction limit. going to measure we're going to make a hole so actually there's a piece of white material here we can use as the screen for the camera and we're going to make a hole in here it's about 56 inches wide so we want to cut it in half 28 roughly so we're going to mark it off about halfway 28 inches roughly
So now what I'm going to do, we've got one hole here and I'm going to drill another hole a little bit smaller so that we're just drilling through the wood here and then finally there's a hole here through the through the metal. There's a small quarter inch hole through the metal, there's a three inch hole through the wood and then maybe we'll make a two inch hole through the next piece of wood there. Maybe make a two inch hole and so on and gradually wrap the hole size down. Now we've got a hole through the wall. You can see right out there. I want to put up a little screen here to be able to see the image. Just a light colored piece of material here. Could be wood or cardboard or an old ceiling tile. Anything that's white or light colored. Put it over here. And that's our screen. The beautiful thing about a pinhole camera 
is you can make it out of everyday ordinary things that you find around the house. You just need a box and some scissors, maybe a knife uh, and some tape. Uh, ideally what I like to do is I like to have a roll of white tape and a roll of black tape. So the first thing that we want to do, we'll put a screen in. So the screen is a piece of white paper and uh, there's some there's some holes in the box where the handle was. There was a handle to carry the box. If there's any holes or uh, blemishes in the box, they can be covered up with some white tape. up any and put down a piece of white paper that's going to be the screen upon which the image is formed and that's good there's the screen just a sheet of white paper and tape the screen on corners of that piece of paper tape down nicely. Now, the other side is the aperture through which light comes in. And then of course when we're ready to take a picture, we'll close up the box. So the, the other side is the aperture through which the light comes. And then we want to, let's say we put that in the center. I'm going to put that aperture in the center. The easiest way to find the center is to is to just take across here so we go here and then uh, across here like this that is the center and then we just what i do generally is i start by cutting a nice big hole in the Nice big hole in here in the center. We make a large hole about an inch square and then we'll make it smaller with tape. So here we have a hole here. hole and that lets light into the screen and then the other thing we want to do is make a hole through which we can photograph that light so we'll make a second hole through which to take a picture and if you're using your camera phone you'll make a rectangular hole maybe for the lens like typically let's say if you're using a, a Samsung a smartphone there's a there's a, an array of cameras there that wants to fit in so you want kind of a an opening that's sort of rectangular, roughly the shape of the array of the, the array that you're using. And you can even just look in here and see. So unlike the other box, this one's not quite big enough to to um, to fit in, but you can look in there and see the the image. So. If I just close this box now, look in here at the world around me, and at the moment, I can look in here and I can see an image formed on the screen. I can actually see a very fuzzy image because that hole is pretty big, and I do see an image of what's in the world around me. And then of course I'll make that 
that hole smaller, appropriately smaller, by, uh, I can use some black tape here to make that hole smaller. So the hole should be about um, something like around a little over a millimeter or so. You might want to make the hole a little bit bigger to let some light in um, so it's not, the image isn't too dark. But you'll find, perhaps through some experimentation, the optimum size of hole or aperture to make. And I'm starting by closing it down some because we know it was way too big. And it's better to start off bigger because you see at the edge of that cardboard here, if you try to make a really small hole through that cardboard, the light can't go sideways, it can only go straight, so you, what you need to do is cut it much larger than you need and screen it up with something thin like the tape, because at the edge of this tape, uh, it's much thinner, the light can go, you know, in different directions. So that's what we want to be able to do, is to have the light be able to cover the entire screen. Typically with a pinhole camera, you'll get a field of view of about 90 degrees or so, plus minus 45 degrees horizontal field of view roughly so it's going to definitely cover that that sheet of paper no problem at all so now that I've made the hole a little smaller the image won't quite be so fuzzy and now I can see in there I can see a little bit of, of, uh, of what's in the world around me it's nice to have a light source to test with have some recognizable light source like this. Here's a recognizable light source. Mm, there's a nice recognizable pattern here of lights. And if I hold up this test pattern somewhere, as a something that I can see, then I can I can see that I've got a good a good image source. So now what we're going to try and do is, there's light leaks in this box, so the next thing to try and do is to fix some of those light leaks where the lights, the lights leaking into the box in various places. So I want to try to find where the lights leaking in and fix it. So uh, where, where the box was open to begin with, there's light coming in there. And of course some of this tape will leak. Uh, Different kinds of tape seal better than other kinds of tape. Different kinds of tape seal better than other kinds of tape. So a quick way to test some tape is to find a, a roll or a pipe like this. This is just another roll of tape. And to put that over here like this and then look into it, you know. And so if you look through it, if you close one eye and look through with the other eye and see if there's any light leaks. So you can tell this tape is leaking quite a bit of light. I can see, I can see light coming through it. And so we know that it's not perfectly light tight. So whereas this other kind of tape here, if I put a piece of that on here and look through it, completely dark. I don't see any light coming through it. So this might actually be a better choice for trying to completely seal the light, especially where there's light coming in, like in these in these corner areas, there's light coming in. I'm going to seal the corners, keep light out of the corners. What you can do is you can look in there and see where those light leaks are. And you see there's light leaking in. Close it up so there's no obvious light leaks. And then the 
corners are a big tear. Now, so we have a hole, so, so I want to use, I'm going to try and use my P30 Pro here, and it has, it has a whole bunch of different cameras. It's got, you know, three or four different cameras there, so I need to, I need a slightly larger hole for it. So depending on how, what camera you're using, you may need to enlarge this view hole a little bit, and that goes into here. That's looking into here now. And there it is, I can see it in there. So now, what I'm gonna try and do is tape this camera phone on there so that it, so there's no light leaking around it. So I'm gonna try and tape this camera phone to that hole without any light leaks. If that allows us to get a good picture through that opening. Maybe 3200 I think is the highest that you can shoot wide. There's higher ISOs like um, you can go up to 408,000 ISO, but 409,600 ISO, but I think 3200 works reliably on wide setting. I kind of want to shoot wide so I see the whole inside of the box, including the screen. And then I'm going to shoot uh, shutter speed is 30 seconds. Now let's try that and see what we get. I'm going to start that up and we'll know if there's light leaks at least. You should see something on the screen, but not too much stray light coming in. So there we see an image on here on the screen. It looks pretty reasonable. I see the the uh, ceiling tiles and uh, so on. I see the light, so I kind of see what's and I see the screen. I can see the paper screen that I've taped onto the onto the inside of that box. Let's try that again, just, I'm going to take this on a little bit better here so it doesn't fall off too readily. Let's take this out just down the street and take a picture with it. We'll just go out the front door and just take a picture looking down the street and see what that looks like. And then if that works, we'll go to the park. So I just want to... Not just on the screen, but on the block. So now, let's try making the hole a little smaller. just a little smaller. I'll pop some more of it here.
And then we can even try and round it out a little bit by taking the corners off it there. What we have now is an approximately octagonal shaped hole, so it's almost round. So I'm here in Grange Park and uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to see the uh, this, green, this, this Grange house here uh, is a good subject matter, the Art Gallery of Ontario at the back of the AGO. So now we have this camera here looking at the Art Gallery and it was a little off screen so if we want to get a little bit of rise on it what we can do is we can lift it up and put something underneath it there so that it's aimed a little bit higher so the camera's looking up just a little bit. So I've got two box cameras here. One is the big box camera that you can actually put your head in to see the image and the other is the small box camera. So I'm just going to use the big one to block the light off the small one because this is somewhat light tight. And what I usually like to try to do is to bring some black cloth so I'm going to wrap this camera up in the black cloth just to get it a little bit blacker. Just a little bit better. Wrap it up, layer of black cloth on here. And take a picture of that. So that is a 13 second exposure at ISO 1600. Let's try that. That's not too bad. So I can definitely see the range house there. You take a look at the picture here. I can see the range house there. Shows up reasonably clearly. day to be out taking pictures. It's a beautiful marvelous building. I'll shoot another picture over here and see the tower and we're all just for fun. So we'll try shooting away from the sun and we'll try shooting into the sun. Now when you're shooting into the sun, pinhole, uh, it's a little hard to get good shots shooting into the sun sometimes. That's light through. There's a pinhole, and then inside the box, there's a screen. Uh, and, and upon the screen, you can see what's uh, visible there. So if I Another approach to making a pinhole camera is to take a camera that has a removable lens, such as this one here. If you happen to have a camera that has interchangeable lenses, you know, you can, you can take the lens off and then you have a lens body with direct access to the sensor array. And so what we do is we make a lens, <coughs> make a pinhole cover for the lens in place of the lens. So I've got here a piece of tape, black tape, and let's say we make a 
small hole in it. And then we'll put a piece of foil or something that's easy to prick. A piece of aluminum foil. And it's easy to prick over there. And so then we'll have a little opening. And usually one thickness of tape maybe will leak some light, but if we cover this up with some additional tape. That's going to go on like that. And we're going to want a small hole in it. I'll prick a little hole inside there. See if there's any light coming through the hole. And then we'll put that over the camera lens, like this. And I'm just going to tape it up so there's not too many light leaks, so there's some additional <coughs> blockage. And then we'll turn it on. And of course you can see out here, now I might want to step up the ISO a little bit because it's a little bit dark. So you need to be out in really bright light to be able to see through this camera, through this pinhole camera. We can go out and take some pinhole pictures now. Oh, I just, oh yeah, yeah. The mining and oil gas. Right? They've got all these assets in remote locations. Yeah. Like so like a conveyor belt. all the different yeah hello hello and thank you for watching the second part of what is a camera the fundamentals of what a camera is what a pinhole camera is in particular uh, I've made hundreds of pinhole cameras and uh, these are some of some of my favorite designs I've shown and 
Uh, they're quick and easy to make. You just, uh, you know, say if I want to turn this box into a pinhole camera. As we saw, what you need to do is to put some kind of a screen in there, some kind of light colored object. Make a hole in it for your pinhole and make another hole for your camera. And there you have a pinhole camera. But of course the devil is in the details, you know, how to get the hole the right size as the size of the hole, as, as the dimensions of the box increase. If we make the box four times bigger, then the aperture is going to, the optimum aperture size varies as the square root. It's going to be twice as big. So it, it'll let through four times as much light because it's got four times the, the uh, cross-sectional area. Uh, but then uh, it's uh, four times away by the inverse square law. It's going to let in a sixteenth of the amount of light to the back. So it's going to be a quarter as sensitive. So when the camera's bigger, it's less sensitive. And also when the camera's bigger, the hole's bigger, so it has less depth of field. But pinhole cameras in general have a massive depth of field. I notice empirically is that the bigger cameras seem to take better pictures. And we've kind of confirmed that experimentally, and you can sort of show. So I want you to understand this and basically to have some fun and, and, and learn something from uh, this material. So let's say if I turn this thing back into a pinhole camera, I'll take the lens off. Uh, now when I take the lens off, the F number is ambiguous. And as you can see, if I put the lens back on, you can see the F number there. If I take that F number and make the F number smaller, what do you notice? It lets in less light, but it has more depth of field. If I make the F number smaller, I've got to bump up the ISO to be able to still see the image. So there you can still see. Now with a higher ISO, you can still see uh, through the camera. So you need more... Uh, sensitivity to light to make up for the reduced F number. And of course the reduced F, F number has, has more depth of field, so things that are close to the camera are in focus more so than things uh, over a wider range. So here, for example, when something's close, it's still kind of in focus to some degree versus when it's far away. And of course the extreme in the F number is that I go back to the pinhole. And so if I take that lens off, there is no F number because the camera doesn't know what the F number is. And I'll put that pinhole back on here. And now we're seeing everything through the pinhole. And so now my ISO is bumped way up. And we're at a massive ISO now. And here is a sequence of lights. And you can see They're pretty much in focus from close to far. So this is what I, I want you to understand. Try to photograph, be creative, photograph some things that are showing the massive depth of field that you can get from the pinhole camera and the ability to sort of see things in focus that are close to the camera as well as things that are far away. So, and understand this chirping phenomenon, you know, periodicity and perspective and how the spatial frequency increases or decreases. So I want everybody to kind of understand some of these really fundamental concepts in physics and in science. So thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you next time.